I'm Paul Stacey here. I'm the Executive Director of Open Education Global. We're a member-based international organization that supports the development and use of open education all around the world. Happy birthday. We're, we're here in Vancouver, just a few blocks away from where I live. I thought I'd get out of my apartment to produce this little segment about how open education relates to Earth Day. And uh, this place that I'm out in front of is called City Farmer. City Farmer provides assistance to the residents in the city about how to compost and how to garden, grow their own food or flowers, whatever they like. I thought I'd shoot this video here in City Farmer's garden, so let's go inside. Why don't we stop here for a second? I mean, one of the things I like about Earth Day is uh, the way you are encouraged to kind of take a moment and stop and just enjoy the beautiful nature around you and the, the way the life is is uh, is developing. This is like a beautiful rosemary plant here. Mm. It's, it's lovely. Let's just go a bit further. Here we are in. Uh, an area called <laughs> City Farmer Worm Corner. Uh, just over here is where they, they actually are composting and uh, and kind of developing worms using these beautiful compost bins. I'm just going to set up here. Okay, well, welcome to City Farmer Garden in Vancouver. I've been asked to speak about open education and open education resources in the context of Earth Day, which I'm delighted to do. I'm a big fan of Earth Day. And um, given the nature of my organization, Open Education Global, I've been asked to speak to it in the context of the world. So um, I wanted to do that in a number of ways. So let me get, let me sort of use some, uh, I printed out a few things to share that I think might help. All right, well, so the first thing I wanted to say is that uh, at Open Education Global, what I like to do is talk about education as an ecosystem, so using biological language like we do for Earth Day. And here's a, a, a diagram from our recent strategic plan that shows that ecosystem. So down the side here, we see the, the primary stakeholders, learners, educators, administrators, government, and then the activities, teaching and learning, research, community public service. And notice how the lines connect it all. So it, there are fundamental interrelationships between all of these things. And the health of education as an ecosystem overall represent, is represented by the connections and the, the ability for all of those aspects of education to support and influence one another. If we were to think about how open education fits in that, it really fits in across the entire ecosystem. So this diagram is meant to show that uh, these are ways in which open is affecting education, whether it pertains to teaching and learning, research, or community public service. So on the teaching and learning side, we have things like open education resources, and open textbooks, and MOOCs, and, uh, and also any emerging open pedagogy practice. In research, we have open access research journals, um, a very big growing area around open science, and also things like open data. And then an area of education that often isn't well attended to, but I think of as really important, is community public service. How is education supporting community public uh, and the public good? And open education is playing a growing role in that capacity, whether it's through engaging students in supporting and enhancing Wikipedia articles or contributing to things like the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So openness and open education cuts across the entire ecosystem and I I would be an advocate of saying it's actually a critical component to the future sustainability of education as a whole. Um, I want to speak about a specific example and move away from generalities and because I've been asked to talk about open education in the global context I'm going to do so by referring to the uh, to the UN 
Sustainable Development Goals. Here are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. All nations have agreed to these, and the goal is to have these be accomplished by 2030, which is quite ambitious. Now we have nine more years to get there. This shows. Whoops! <laughs> I just realized that this shows all 17 goals. <laughs> Uh, and also, um, it, it also is pretty evident how they relate to Earth Day. So, uh, whether you're looking at a sustainable development goal that relates to climate action, or one that pertains to life below water, or life on land, or even um, renewable and clean energy, or on the human side of things, things like. Um, zero hunger, elimination of poverty, these things all clearly pertain to having a healthy ecosystem and a sustainable earth and a world in which we will live. And so the open education example I want to talk about pertains to those uh, sustainable development goals. It actually is an initiative that won an Open Education Award for Excellence. Um, these are awards that Open Education Global gives out annually, and this is uh, one that won an award for open pedagogy. And so let me share with you a little bit about what that means. Um, this initiative involved an open pedagogy fellowship that engaged educators, faculty at different institutions across Canada and the United States in redesigning assignments for their students and learners that would engage them in what we call renewable assignments as opposed to disposable assignments. So uh, by disposable assignment, we're referencing the very frequent use of tests and assignments that are given to students to generate a mark, but don't actually contribute to, the, to any societal goals or good beyond simply the generation of a mark to show acquisition of knowledge by that student. And, and often the student gets their mark and then they just, you know, throw that assignment away. So what we're interested in in open education is developing renewable assignments that engage students in doing important work to the betterment of society. So um, in this open pedagogy fellowship, faculty are asked to redesign assignments that engage students in ways that contribute to making the world a better place. So uh, there are lots of different uh, colleges involved, including uh, Kwantlen Polytechnic University here in, uh, in British Columbia, Canada, where I live, but also colleges across the U.S. like Montgomery College and Maricopa and so on. So there's a lot of different participants now that are engaged in this practice. Um, one of the examples that's emerged of that, and there are a lot, actually lots of them right now, is an assignment that, that deals with a sustainable de development goal around zero hunger. This assignment engages students in getting outside and, uh, and looking at the plants that are in their environment. They use an app that they put on their phone called iNaturalist. iNaturalist, uh, here's the homepage for that. It's an app that was developed by the National Geographic Society and the California Academy of Sciences. And um, iNaturalist, what happens is the student is encouraged to get out in the environment, use their phone, take a picture of a plant in your environment, which could be like a weed growing in cracks here in the city, and you upload it to iNaturalist, and in iNaturalist it adds data about that, where was it, what's the geographical location, and it engages citizen scientists who have expertise in plants around the world in helping identify what that plant is. And so all that data gets tagged on the image. The image can be openly licensed, made into an open shareable resource. And then uh, the students have an aggregate or a survey across all the students engaged in this activity of the plants in their environment. There's a subsequent assignment where then students are asked to pick one species of plant that has been identified and dig into its history. Does it have a history as an edible plant or a medicinal plant? Is it something that indigenous cultures in that region have used in the past? How would you prepare it for either eating or for use as medicine? And, and then sharing the results of that and engaging discussion around that, and in a small way, contributing to the sustainable development goal around no hunger. It's, ex it's examples like this and the openness of them that uh, we find really exciting in the open education space. 
we really hope that many others start to look at how to make use of both the open education resources themselves, whether it be resources for assignments or resources to help with the teaching and learning practice, but more importantly, getting their students and their learners engaged in this practice and, and, and um, having them become active in making the world better and contributing to the enhancement of the world through things like Earth Day by doing assignments that contribute to uh, understanding our world and, and celebrating it. So that's the short uh, little example I wanted to share. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me on Earth Day. And I hope you get out during Earth Week and celebrate the glorious beauty around us that, uh, that has been happening despite COVID. I certainly have been enjoying the beautiful nature around me as a means of, uh, of uh, making myself feel better. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Thanks so much.